Welcome everyone to another video on the DIY Maker channel. And today I've got an interesting proposition for you. Uh, many of us who love our solar generators or our solar rechargeable um, batteries all face the same issue. You've got your solar array out in the sun uh, where it's getting all that good energy and you've got your cables to bring that power to your battery but the longer you make these cables, the more loss you have. DC power transmission on low voltage has never been a really great idea. Um, Tesla and Edison fought about it for years. And thankfully, Tesla finally won. But the, the reality is electric, electricity from your solar solution is almost always going to be DC. That's the output of a standard PV panel. So you're stuck with having really, really big, heavy cables that are expensive. And the longer you make them, the more loss you have. So how do you get a reasonable compromise between the two? Well, I offer you the following solution. What if you could have your solar battery out there in the sun with your panels, but have it cooled using the same power of the sun that's trying to make it hot. So enter the solar battery cooler. Here's my project. Let's take a look at the build and uh, what goes into making this thing a reality. So this is the solar battery cooling system. Uh, it's really actually quite simple. It's basically a plastic tote with a solar fan kit installed. It has an intake on this side and an exhaust on this side. The intake is down near the ground, very low. The exhaust is as high as it can be in the tote. It features a wrap of a reflective insulative material on the outside and a window into the controls for our solar battery. Now this thing is uniquely portable. You just drop it on the ground, the sun lights up the panel, and it starts cooling, no worries. It, uh, it's pretty much idiot proof. Just put it over a solar battery out in the sun and it will work really hard to keep it cool. I've been really impressed with the performance of this fan kit and uh, this project has been a heck of a lot of fun to build and use. It does work very, very well. And uh, we're gonna take a look at what it takes to build one of these for yourself if you're interested. Um, for me, out in the California sun, it has been a wonderful addition to my array of solar solutions. Welcome to the build of the ultimate solar generator cooler. Here we've got a fan kit with a solar panel from Amazon and some insulation materials. Uh, we've got a reflective wrap and we also have a pink foam which is the Fomular NGX from Owens Corning. Uh, this is the fan kit, again, from Amazon. It all comes pre-wired. You have no wiring issues to worry about. It's all ready to go. We just need to pass the wires through and hook them up, and we're done. Now, my crate that I used, or my tote that I used, measured uh, 14 and 5 eighths inches. So here I'm just kind of transferring those measurements to the pink foam striking some lines and then uh, cutting those lines out with a utility knife. Um, nothing really special going on here, but once we get them cut most of the way through, the foam just easily separates. And we're going to make uh, another identical set, uh, another identical panel that's going to get sandwiched. So we'll have two inches of effective insulation on the top of our enclosure. Uh, so again, good deep cut. And then we break it right on the cut and we're good to go. Now you want to keep these nice and square so that we can find the center easily um, by going across the corners. If your angles are not 90 degrees, this won't really work that well. So do try to be careful um, on your cutting to make sure that you stay true. Now my panels were two foot by two foot. So I, I already had square edges to start with. I just cut them to width. Um, finding the center on both, it turns out I really only need to do that on one of them, but anyway, I am going to give myself a center line 
uh, down the long edge of this panel. And what I'm going to do is put the bracket on here. And what I want to create is an inlet in the foam so that the bracket can exist uh, and not apply mechanical stress to the foam when the foam is bonded in place. So here I'm just relieving that material for the bracket to exist. And again, nothing, nothing special here, just using a utility knife. It doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's ever going to see this. It's actually inside the whole thing. It gets encapsulated. So this is the bracket now fitting inside that void and coming through the slits that I cut. And here I'm tapping it down on top of the other panel to tell me where that cut needs to be to allow those arms to pass through on what is going to become the upper panel. Once the upper panel is in place, we just kind of do a test fit here, get everything ready. Then we're going to go ahead and mount the bracket to the tote. Um, just quarter 20 hardware here, nothing special. I'm using the mounting holes that are already in the bracket. Uh, so I'm not, not inventing anything here, just using what, uh, what already exists. Kind of securing that good. And then uh, mounting the foam in place for a little trial fit before the glue up. Everything looks really good. Going to pull them back off. And now we're going to start the glue up. I'm using a 3M adhesive here. In retrospect, this adhesive was not a good match for the pink foam. It did uh, tend to uh, eat into the foam a little bit. It wasn't bad because this is a contact adhesive. The evaporation rate's pretty high or pretty quick on the uh, solvents, but um, you might want to use a more gentle adhesive, something that might be water-based. Um, but this is what I had, so this is what I used. Uh, a good construction adhesive like liquid nails or something like that would work fine for this. Um, picking a different insulation material is also an option here. Uh, here I'm taking the wrap and I'm just determining where those slots need to be cut for the uh, for the reflective material. And uh, then I'm going to flip it over because I want that label to be bonded on the inside so I don't have to worry about wasting the material or removing it. And I'm just going to apply the adhesive to the box. You do want to give this some time. I cut all those delays of me waiting for the glue to dry because it's not a very interesting video. Um, Anyway, here I'm just going to cut some slits. This is just like wrapping a Christmas present, folks. It's not, not any different than that. Um, it's a basic arts and crafts project at this point. Uh, just doing the, doing the glue and stick. Um, I usually left about four or five minutes uh, between the application of the glue and actually applying the pressure. But once you do that, I mean, it, it sticks on there really well. Um, and we're wrapping these edges, wrapping these corners around. And then uh, we're going to do the final length on this first piece that goes kind of longitudinally across the tote. Uh, once we have that done, we can get ready to, uh, to adhere that in too. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the glue up and application to all the surfaces and then do the wrap and stick. Um, and now I'm just going to cut these corners a little bit. Again, back to the uh, Christmas present idea. Um, just trying to make this neat. I mean, does it really matter? N no, it doesn't. It's not going to affect its operation at all. I just wanted really good insulation quantity qualities on this. And, uh, and the, between the reflective nature of this um, kind of wrap and the two inches of foam, on the top, I think I should get a pretty good R value out of this and very low thermal gain. Uh, so next thing I had to do is measure the side panels to cut out of the remnant that I had left over uh, from the initial wrap. And I, I want to say that was around 15 inches or so. But again, your tote's going to differ. You don't, you know, none of these dimensions are really matter because you may have a different tote. You may select different in insulation. Um, but again, I'm just using the contact adhesive. It's not a problem on this Mylar uh, wrapped insulation. It, it actually was a great adhesive for that and really stuck this stuff to the tote really well as well. Um, again, you want the tote to be really clean and you want the insulation to be really clean. 
but you know if you're using new stuff that, that shouldn't be a problem and here I'm just wrapping up the other side and then uh, most of the uh, insulation application is pretty much done at this point um, now it's all just making this pretty and uh, getting the holes cut for the fans so one fan is going low that's going to be the intake thinking that the air closer to the ground is going to be a little cooler uh, so here I'm just going to cut the mylar insulation first and then come in and cut the plastic tote out of the way to mount the fan there's one hole now we're going to go up on the upper edge with this one this is the vent this is the exhaust it's going to go where the air would naturally rise after it gets warm and get ejected from the tote uh, as we're charging now this this is the fan sitting there uh, ready to get mounted and i first had this grand plan where i was going to bend these brackets to kind of wrap around that molding and i started to go down this road and then very quickly i found out these cheap brackets were uh, some kind of chinese metal that just broke as soon as you tried to bend it so i ended up punting on that idea and just moved the holes in and mounted them where the uh where the plastic was still flat and that worked great i used the screws that i removed from the grill i really don't need a grill on the inside so i just repurposed those screws as mounting screws so again all of the hardware that i've used so far has come with the fan tip. and then i wanted a one inch hole through the top so that I could route the wires easily from the panel down into the uh, cavity below. And here I'm just putting some stick-on uh, tie wrap mounts or zip tie mounts to kind of get all of this cabling and wiring stowed out of the way just so that it, uh, it's not dangling or getting caught on stuff or being a nuisance. There are switches on these fans. You want to make sure they're both on so you don't have to muck around with uh, I don't know why you'd ever want to turn them off just take the thing out of the sun when you don't want it to run um, anyway once all the tie wraps are in place which again do come with the fan kit um, I just went along and trimmed them all off made it nice and neat and look at this thing it's already working um, that's just on the shady sun here on the back of the truck where I was working uh, it's enough to drive those fans already I realized I needed a Windows to watch the charge process happen on the um, on the solar generators as they're sitting inside of here, but I didn't want um, to open it up all the way. Uh, I wanted the airflow to be controlled through there, so I, I made myself a window, and then I put a big curtain over top of it. But uh, here I'm just cutting out the uh, the mylar reflective insulation getting ready to um, to drop those holes in with the hole saw again and I'm going to use a little bit of a technique here where I'm coming in on an angle with the hole saw so that I only cut the outside radius I'm not cutting on the inside with the hole saw and then I'm going to cut the long part of the oval shape out with the utility knife and uh, and get that out of the way and then I used um, a really nice uh, this is from the duct industry you know heating and air condition industry it's a really good adhesive tape it's made out of aluminum and i just cut some uh, cuts around there to get it to take the shape of the curve easily and once i get this bonded in and all adhered to both sides it makes for a really nice little portal then i thought i'd dress it up a little more by putting some uh, strips over top of those uh slits that I cut to make the radius and it ended up looking really nice when it was all done so I also went along and put some uh, that same tape along all of the seams just to kind of finish it up and dress it up Th this was probably over the top but I had the material I figured why not then I thought I would seal up some of the gaps on the top too um, just to make it look nice and neat and keep the dust out of there and uh and that's it there's our window and our door and uh and this thing's ready to test out thanks for joining me everybody this build has been a heck of a lot of fun and uh even though we're a little late in the day to get any good sun <clears throat> it uh is proving itself quite useful thanks for watching
and remember to subscribe to the DIY Maker channel.